All right, so sorry about that. YouTube limits us to 15 minutes, so I had to keep going here, but I didn't want to cut short on getting all these concepts done. Uh, I was running out of time there, so that's why we're jumping back in here to the last part. So we had the total method. I missed it inside of here. I don't know why I missed it over here, but we're saying order dot total. There, there it is right there. Um, and then we can call that total and put that in. So let's say thank you for the pizza. And so when I run this one more time, I end up with my pizza RS, welcome. And I put in my name, Tony, and then my returning customer. Let's say yes, right there. Oops, I did capital yes, so that's not gonna work. It's gonna say it's false, but uh, I'm gonna do A for anchovy. Um, what type of fish? Let's do Asia fish. All right, and so it came back and it said the customer status is false. So Tony, customer status is false because again, I set those values right here. And then my total is nine because I picked, you remember in anchovy, I picked the region of fish to be Asia. So my fish cost was the super dot total, which was the $5 of the super dot total. All pizzas cost $5 plus since I picked Asia, the fish cost was $4, so it's $5 plus $4, so that's my $9 fish. All right, so this code solves the problem for one of them, and what your task is going to be is to go off and do it for the other two. Just to remind you what that structure will be since we have the time, you're going to come inside of here, you can create a method over here, and you're going to do order is equal to um, prompt for pepperoni order right there. All right, and that's not going to work right away, but you can see I can create the method here. If you don't want to have to type it out again, you can type it on if you want to, but I can create the method right there. And so it creates that order where it returns a pizza order by default. I want to change that to be pepperoni order. All right, and then I can go and do the rest of my code to solve that. And so again, you're not maybe, you're probably not building the pepperoni one, but you, at this point you would be prompt for the number of pepperoni using your get integer input method, the one we talked about in phase three, right there. And then uh, fill, oops, then, so that that's, that's what we had done here. We filled it, we did the, you know, and, and since we have that, input being done already. We don't have to validate it. We don't have to check is it European or Asia. You just get it. So you just have int uh, pep count. You have your pepperoni count is equal to, you know, your method um, that you get right here. So you, you have something like get integer input and then your prompt. How many pep? S something along those lines. So that's what the code you'd be filling in because you, if you built this this method from phase three, if not, you'd have a little bit more work to do, but you don't have to do pepperoni. You don't have to do that um, that data type. It'd be whatever data type you chose to do. And then you'd be creating a, um, a new pepperoni here. So pepperoni, control space, pepperoni pizza. Um, PP is equal to new pepperoni pizza. And pp dot set pepperoni. Oops, no, we don't have that. Oh, we've got that method. Let's go back to pepperoni pizza. We didn't create the the setters and getters for this, so it's again a good thing to do. Check in our code. Uh, so we're doing uh, alt uh, control um, shift alt s or right click source. Either way, and we're going to generate getters and setters for the number of pepperonis here, and we add those two methods. So we save this up and we come back to this guy and set number of pepperonis and that'd be based off of the pepperoni count right there and then we're returning PP. So this one could be simpler depending on what you're at prompting for. You might have several things you're prompting for. It's entirely up to your logic. Um, so that's why I'm kind of buzzing through this. Not everything should look the same. Um, you might look very similar and you can certainly start with something very similar here. Um, the goal is of being a programmer is not to be able to follow a procedure that somebody else didn't create something. Our job is not manufacturing. It's not like, okay, um, I'm going to show you how to quilt um, a, a blanket. 
And everybody who comes behind you is going to want the exact same blanket, so go build that exact same blanket. And when we build code, code is automated to do its own thing. And once we build that code to automate it, we never have to build that code again. Um, so you will sometimes follow along an, an example and demo to learn how to do it, and I encourage you to do that. When you see the demos that are in these videos, when you see the demos in future classes, build exactly that thing to practice it, and then go build the thing you're being asked to build. Most of the time, at least for most instructors, it'll be two different things. Some instructors will do your homework for you, and all you have to do is follow, follow along and build it. That's not my preferred way of doing it because, again, your job as a software developer is to build original things. Your job is engineering, not manufacturing. In, you know, when you're doing software, you're doing design. Even while you're writing code, technically speaking, you're designing a new thing. You're bringing it to life. And, and until you have all the code working and, and fixed, you're still discovering. You're still figuring out where things are and how they're being built and everything that comes into it. So, you know, as much as you say we have a design phase, that design is constantly evolving until you finish the code. Um, so it's not to say you shouldn't design. I'm just saying that, you know, we are constantly building new things as software developers. And, and that's the trick here in our code is figuring out what's new. Um, and so there's a lot of things that have gone here. There's, you have know, spread it across about, you know, 25, 35 minutes or so of demo. Um, so you probably will have to go back and check these things out. Again, follow step by step. Ask for help if you need it. Come back to the live chat. Ask your instructor. Send an email um, to me uh, if you're not sure. Zip up your code and ship it over. Let's work on this stuff together because this is, you know, I've, there's a lot of different skills going on here. You're learning the tool, you're learning the language, you're learning what it means to code, you're learning to design, you're learning about selling pizza all at the same time. Um, and that can be a lot to remember, a lot to think about. Your your what's called cognitive load uh, might you know how much your brain's working might be really really stressed right now. And and sometimes as a coder, I felt it like I just can't think about one more thing. I need to have something done before I can add anything else to my plate. And that's very true. And it's very much like weightlifting. You know, you're weightlifting with your mind. And the more you do it, the stronger you'll be, and the more you'll remember, and the more you can do. So keep it up. Let me know how it's going. Best of luck with this. Hopefully, we'll be selling pizzas in no time.